My name is Jim, and I watch The Atheist Edge. My name is Dr. Brady Blevins, and I watch The Atheist Edge. John brought up uh, the uh, Jesus' lineage in Luke, saying it traces back to Mary. I just looked it up. It traces back to Joseph also. Both of them trace back to Joseph. Uh, do, you, do you want to rescind that? No, no. It's, uh, no it's, uh, it mentions Joseph, but he's not part of the lineage. I mean, yeah, you no. Know, it's acknowledge that Luke's genealogy traces back to Mary. We'd have to read it. it. Starts, they both start with Adam, Adam and they both end with no, Joseph. No, no. Uh, Luke goes uh, to Adam and uh, Matthew goes back to, to uh, David or Abraham. Oh, right, right, right. One's a kind of a half lineage. Okay, so they both start in the past, but they all end with Joseph, yes? No. No? Well, I think they do. They do. They no, do. The, the wording but is time right now. Mary. Luke oh. ends with the phrase, who is the, uh, who is the son of Mary, who was... Uh, uh, wife to uh, Joseph. That that, it, it, if you look at the wording, it's Mary's genealogy. You can look it up. It, it, they don't. They both definitely end the way you said. And I think the clincher is if you look at the way the early church interpreted that. We always have to look at them. You look at Justin Martyr. You look at individuals like Irenaeus, Clement of Rome, and Ignatius. They all look at it the exact same way. Through You're definitely male. correct. But yes. Also, like John said, why does it matter if? If Yahweh is the father, why does it need to trace lineage at all? Yeah, okay. I think the reason it needed to trace lineage was to show veracity of the text. And okay. that is the exact reason why. It didn't, by the strict letter, need to do it. Uh -huh. But I think the authors, okay. the method of the, the way they're writing, they viewed it as a necessity to pretty much give credence, even more credence to the text. William, you said Luke interviewed eyewitnesses. Yes. Luke wasn't written until 85 to 90 CE. Okay. Luke is, uh, the original versions of Luke don't have Luke as the title. How do you square that circle? Disagree. I think the originals, the oldest manuscripts that we have, do have Luke as the title. Secondly, I will also argue, I don't agree with that dating. I think you're being a little bit moderate. I think even if you be a little, if you, even if you're a little bit conservative, and you look at what Bart Ehrman says. I think he gives it a little bit earlier of a date. Definitely I think it, over 75. I say around that date. Okay, still it's 30, 40 years after. No doubt, date. still Mary is definitely older. Did Luke write it? Yes, in I, your heart of hearts. I definitely think okay. so. The reason I can I answer that right away. Sure. The reason I think so is because if you look at every early manuscript of Luke, they're all rolled up with Acts. And we know Luke was the author of Acts. That Luke Acts thing really puzzles me. Oh, right, John, it's incredible, isn't it? Yes. Well, Luke wasn't an eyewitness. I mean, he was not an eyewitness. I, I mean, don't think he was. I think this is a minority well, he, opinion, yes? Would, would uh, you say I think what, he, it is a minority opinion, you, what you're okay, saying. Okay, you're yeah. admitting that it's a minority I, I will definitely opinion. give you this. I think by the time Luke was doing his uh, interviewing, I believe it was interviewing, I think Joseph was, was dead already by that time. Okay. Um, the Isaiah prophecy. The majority say that the is uh, the Isaiah prophecy the big one uh, refers to the children of Israel not the Savior so again are you a minority opinion on that oh, you I, mean about suffering servant yes yes it does yes is, uh, is Isaiah, that referring to Israel Isaiah 49 the entire nation of Israel I'm, Isaiah 49 3 it's indisputable so okay which uh, I'm not you're, you're not talking about the virgin birth you're talking about something else yeah, he's right. talking about different I think the majority of Jewish scholars would agree with you okay I definitely disagree and I think that I would be in the minority when it comes to Jewish scholars. When, when it comes to Christian ones, I would be in the definite massive majority. William, often you mention the proto-evangelium of Jacobi. Correct. In my interpretation, that is actually the Gospel of James. Correct. The Literally the first Gospel of James, it means. Right. Um, the two, two questions. A, is that do Catholics is that uniquely unique to Catholicism, meaning do Protestants disregard it? And two, why didn't it make it in the Bible if it's so important? Excellent. Number one, that is not unique to Catholics. In fact, if you look up a scholar by the name of Megan Nutzman, she argues that ancient testimony is included in that apocryphal gospel. Number two, Catholic scholars such as, such as Father Christian Coppice, who is publishing a work with Brill, also harkens to that work as containing ancient hey. Jewish testimony hey. of individuals that doubted Mary and put her to the test. Woo. Trying to be real fast, I'm sorry about no, me really good. quick. That's good, that's um, good. Josephus, would you agree is the earliest extra biblical mention of Jesus? 
Oh, and it's so, here's a let, tough let me, one. Let me follow on. If you do, and you did admit it, admit in the debate that both of, both of his reference to Jesus is, Jesus was um, interpolation. Right. I would I, I would not be able to quote those because despite the fact that a lot of people do believe that that is legitimate. I'm going to have to fall into the minority and say I think it is an interpolation. I would not fall in and that line. And since it's the earliest mention of Jesus, it, does that hurt your case that the earliest mention of Jesus outside the Bible is, is fake? It doesn't because if you look at a very early mention in Rabbi Akiba, who is banning Christians from reading the Bible because they were in essence worshipping Christ as deity, that is also a very, very early mention. I can quote other ones besides him. John. He really got you backed into a corner on the dying and rising gods. You really couldn't come up with one. I'm going to offer to to William here in a minute, to Salmoxus, Osiris, Romulus, and Hercules, and maybe Perseus. With regard to Justin Martyr, who William considers authentic and uh, what he says, er, an early uh, witness, uh, well, close Testament. to an early witness, right? An early church father. No. Um, Justin Martyr went at length about talking about how you Christians who worship this Jesus Christ the Savior who was born of a virgin and di died and rose again you're nothing more than the sons of Jupiter Perseus all and he started naming off all the gods that have died and rose again why didn't we mention that why didn't you mention it Justin Martyr's admission well, that there was th dying and rising gods prior to Jesus I think I read uh, that did you read that Justin Martyr quote? I think I read, I read that, yeah. What would you have to say about the Sons of Jupiter quote? Okay, I would agree in part that when you read Justin Martyr, you see it's a bit more complicated because you're quoting only one area. In that area, he does quote similarities. But if you look elsewhere... But he admits that there were gods prior to Jesus that have died and rose again. Granted, but if you read in another area of Justin Martyr, he does not give them ancient pedigree. He calls them copycats. So if, How can they be copycats if they're older? Perseus is way before Jesus. Granted, but remember what Justin Martyr is arguing. He's arguing that these are later forgeries. Mm -hmm. So granted, some of them may predate, and some of them do have similarities. My argument is none of them tick both boxes, dying, uh, virgin born, or resurrected. No. None oh, of them tick both. You're saying one or the other. No, no, no. I, I didn't even mention virgin in this one. It was just dying and rising. Right, but, but, but that is in his book. that died and rose again mm. as deities. Correct. They, but, they started off human, right. they died, they rose as but, deities. But the, but the reason why I, I, I did include both those is because in his book, mm. he does include. He includes virgin born and rising. So he included okay. both in his book. That is the only reason I brought up. Remember, it would make no sense if it didn't also tick the virgin born area. Mm. You said the virgin birth is unique in history. Now I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit mm. to, just a little bit to the uh, global flood. Just quick thoughts on the, the flood narrative, knowing that the Epic of Gilgamesh and then before that the Enuma Elish said okay. the exact same thing. I agree they are quite similar, but I think there are dis distinctions as well. And there is also the issue with this. The, also, the issue is this. What is the pedigree of the dating of those documents as well? Because that has to be one thing that we have to examine as well. You're, you're, you're doubting that the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Enum Elish no, is it, not older than the... It is older, okay. but certain elements of it, oh, certain okay. elements oh, of it right. do post-date. And that is the oh, argument, interpolation right, that's time. the argument Justin Martyr is making as well. All he right. does agree that uh, some of these gods do predate, but then notice, if you look at his dialogue with Trifo, he does make the argument that, you know what? You guys are saying something different in other areas as well. Mm -hmm. He's arguing the interpolations. Mm -hmm. uh, John, William went at length in Galatians about, uh, he cited some sources in Galatians about Jesus being born of a virgin. You're saying oh, the best we could get to is born of a woman, right? Right. right. Uh, why do you say that? Well, you both know Greek, so. No, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, he can, uh, he can twist things, which I think he does too often. As a believer, he disagrees. Uh, it, but it, it definitely says born of a woman. Yes, yes. Said born of a woman, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it doesn't mean that she was born of a virgin woman. But what would you say William's saying? Well, since God his argument planted is, the seed. His argument there had to do with Hagar and Sarah and Abraham. He's right, part of it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so it's natural that, that to... That was his concubine because uh, his right, wife right. couldn't conceive. And, and, and that has to relate to the law and the gospel, right? right. So uh, being born of a woman is, is part of that argument. And uh, not, it didn't require a virgin because neither 
um, Sarah or um, um, What's the other you Hagar. Uh, Hagar. Hagar. Sorry, were uh, were virgins either. So but why would they even say born of a woman unless they meant something unique? Because I, I, everyone knows everyone's well, born in a woman. That was woman. unique. Why let, would he even say let, that? Let's then? say let's say it this way. If you're arguing for an extraordinary claim like a miraculous virgin birth, which requires objective evidence for it, then a disputed passage doesn't cut it. Can, can you give me 35 no, seconds to no. answer that? Okay, the reason I brought up Sarah and Hagar was not to argue that they were both virgin born. The argument that Paul is fleshing out, by the way, I'm working on a commentary with a scholar on this, Galatians 2, 3 and 4, they give us imagery of Sarah and Hagar being unable to give birth to the child of promise. And then Paul says, why can't they do it? Their wombs are shut up. He uses the Greek word synkleo, shut up from sin. They can't give birth to the child of promise. And all he does is lead up to, finally we've gotten to the woman. Well, he conceives with a uh, concubine first. Correct. But that's not the chosen one. Right, but that isn't the argument. The only argument is, sure they give birth to children, but none of the women from the time of Moses until we get to Mary can give birth to the child of promise, which is the Messiah. But Paul tells us, why can't they? Okay. And he uses a metaphor, their wombs are closed up from sin. And then he says, now we get to Mary, who, gives, who is able to give birth to seed, singular. And he uses a particular phraseology, genomenon et gunaikos, in essence telling us Mary is not under that law of sin, and she was a virgin when she did give birth. Now when it comes to seed, the word seed, Paul does use the, the, yeah, he does. the singular. In Romans as well. But in, in uh, the, the, the promise, the problem, promise, uh, originally spoken to Abraham was to seeds. That He's is, right. That's right. To well, we're talking about Paul, verb. though. So Paul yeah. actually actually twists the original it's a pro verb instead of a noun. He twists the original prophecy from "I will bless all the seeds of, of the earth," you know, through yeah, you. Yeah, that's, no, that's another prophecy. Though. That's something different, though. Oh, he, he's right about that, but it's different. It's a completely different prophecy. Completely different. Uh, John, you both argued at length about etymology of um, Alma and Parthenos, and there's another one. Betula. Good, thank you. Um, push all that aside. Let's just give them, let, let's give them the fact that uh, it meant virgin, just for now, just for the sake of argument. Let's meant, what, even Alma, Parthenos, let's just, let's just assume it meant virgin. Um, other animals in the kingdom, right. in the animal kingdom, are capable of asexual reproduction. Yeah. Starfish, Komodo dragons, wasps, crawfish, snails, beads, lizards, <clears throat> cockroaches, and salamanders. Correct. Why would you consider it, I, it would be highly abnormal, but could a homo sapien mammal, it, is it is it plausible? I, I wanted for to bring that a, up in a my sexual debate. reproduction. I, I would argue, yeah. I wanted to bring that up in my opening. I didn't have time. In touch. All right. Have a good one. Yeah. We, we know nature would usually not let that happen, but in this one instance, I'm not even talking supernatural. Just naturally, I think, I think, naturally, could I think it's you called, see a Homo sapien mammal ever well, just I think accidentally a, having an asexual? Uh, salamanders, I think, uh, do asexual. A reproduction. They don't Fleas are born pregnant. Yeah. They're already knocked so, up um, when they're born. So no, it's just not unnatural. It's just not a miracle. It, you know, would you say that was when a salamander or a flea <laughs> does that is a miracle? No. No. Because you can explain I it naturally. Even talk about supernatural phenomenon. It's yet. not. It's not a I'm just saying, if it were to happen once, it would just be. It would be jaw dropping. It would be scientific breakthrough. But would it be just weird to you? I mean, would it be out of? Would it be impossible? Well, given, given the surrounding texts of Matthew, Luke, and Mark, about Nazareth, the census, about the slaughter of the innocents, but it didn't happen, about the star of Bethlehem, uh, about where Jesus was born, all that, given the surrounding texts, then the, the, there's no, uh, there's no uh, textual historical evidence to support the claim that it happened then and there. I, I think it definitely did happen. I think the evidence does support it. He brings up the star and what have you, but he never talks about the early testimony for any of that. All John is doing is sticking to the Bible alone, which I know might be fine if you're dialoguing with an evangelical, but a Roman Catholic or a Catholic, Eastern Catholic or an Orthodox like to delve outside as well and look at other evidence. We have a ton, ton bit of other evidence that would indicate that. I'm going to agree with you on one thing, and I'm going to agree with John on one thing. If by some chance the virgin birth could have occurred, like you brought up other examples, maybe we could fall in line and say, you know what? Maybe that in and of itself is not a miracle. What I would then argue for, the miracle would be, 
The fact that we have God that came incarnate in the flesh. I know that's a whole other uh, topic for all of the debate, right. but that, that is what I would argue would be the miraculous. Not, maybe not the virgin birth itself, but the fact that we had God that came incarnate in the, the flesh. Is, is the virgin birth even necessary? You said you would trash the whole thing if the virgin birth weren't real. Right, I think it is necessary I think because it's if the, biblical if and historical. The resurrection, the resu if I were a Christian, the resurrection would be what I put all my money on. Okay, but no notice what some people are doing. They're, they're sticking to only one part of Paul. Paul wrote a lot more than only that. He also said the belief in the body and blood of Christ was essential to the faith. So there's more than just that that is essential. But if you eliminate even one of those, everything does tumble down. John, you were, I think, uh, someone in the, during the Q&A asked you, oh, no, 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 it was, it was William during the cross exam. He asked you, about, name a manuscript that, was, help me out, something I witnessed. Okay, no, he, he, the argument that he does make is that all of the manuscripts are anonymous. My right. argument is the most ancient ones are not anonymous. Okay. They have the authorship within I'm them. I'm going to name three of what I consider the most ancient. You tell sure. me what they are, and then John Can you give me the century as well? Uh, I'll try. P52 is probably around 120. I'm going to guess 120 AD-ish. P52 is, a, is four verses of the Gospel of John, and that is the oldest manuscript, and I'm going to guess 120-ish. Okay. It might even be 200-ish. And P then what? after that, the, okay. the first two oldest you, you mean P, works... You mean P62 or 52? No, 52. 52, okay. P52 is four... It's front and back. Right. There's two verses on the front, two verses on yeah. the back. It's the oldest we have. Sure. I think it's between 120 and 200. Yeah, I think they dated around that, yeah. It has to be anonymous. Correct. John's right. John's right. It has to be anonymous. That's the oldest one we got. And okay. then the first full ones we have is Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus. Those are the two first full ones we have. Okay, but well, and those are like four hundred. You're, you're right and wrong. Uh, those are fourth century. Sinaiticus and Vaticanus are fourth century. That's even dated. That's even dated from by Bart Ehrman. He dates okay, that. Okay, three hundred. Okay, here off by a century. Right, right. But the the, the little document you're talking about, uh, I believe it was like a little scroll. A scrap size of credit yeah, card. Yeah, uh, is that the one that was found in the? Um, uh, I forgot. It's not the Qumran. It's not the. Desert. I don't. I don't remember where it was found. Um, but it's the oldest thing we got. Uh, I don't think it is older than P4. P I don't think... P2 is the oldest, William, I'm pretty sure. Okay, you might be right on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as complete manuscripts... and Codex Sinaiticus. Uh, P62 and P4 have the heading. They have Matthew and, and they have Matthew as well. They both have them but as that's heading. that's 400. No, that's not. It's 2nd century. P P4 and P62 are dated earlier. Codex Sinaiticus is 2nd century? No, 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 no. P62 and P4. That, that's a complete work? No, those are not complete. Okay. Okay, if you're talking about... Oh, but it does have I'm, a heading? It has Gospel a heading. Gospel of what? what is Gospel of Matthew. They're both Matthew. And that's what? Second century? Second century, yes. So 100 something. Oh, around one something, yeah. Still. It's still irrelevant. But yeah. Sinaiticus and Vaticanus are probably more complete. Those I would uh, date it around the four, fourth century. Is that those are more for complete. you to admit that they can't be eyewitnesses, though, like what John said? Hold on. What do you mean? What do you mean? What? Anonymous. But that wasn't Not the argument. Eyewitnesses, anonymous. They have to be written anonymously still. No, I still think they're eyewitnesses. Definitely. I do. And the reason I think they're eyewitnesses... Did, did, did John live 200 years then? Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean did John live 200 years? I believe that John's testimony is earlier than the latest stated. I don't believe... What are you dating John's testimony to? The P-52 is uh, at least 200, we but, said, right? Hold on. But what do you date his testimony? You, certainly you don't think that the earliest manuscripts you have is when they were written. You don't think that. That's the earliest that we can start with. Granted, but you, it, for even we scholars know, believe John wrote it before. He could right. have been word of mouth from then backwards. Okay, so the earliest that we have of John, what year is that? Uh, 160, let's say. So you, definitely, you definitely, it was around 200 or something. Yeah. You definitely believe he wrote before that. Mm, well, I think John you, you, was yeah, I don't, I don't. Me personally, I think John okay, was illiterate. Okay, the, the testimony from John, you believe it wasn't by John, right? But the testimony from him, you believe it was before that. It, I don't, I don't know any scholar that would date it to the two hundred. It was secondhand hearsay written by a. a, a That's scholar the point. In okay, the okay, okay. It wasn't written by John. Okay, even right. if you follow along those lines, I've never heard of anybody that would date John to around the two hundreds. You don't follow along that line, do you? There's no way. Polycarp is writing before that. Well, Polycarp is dated to before that. Says he was taught John by John. Was around 100. You go with 100? Actually, put pen to paper about 100. That's I'd go what, about 80. That's what consent. Okay, I'll give you 80. I'd go about 80. And, 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 and because remember, Polycarp was taught by John, and Polycarp is dated to around 90. Yep. All right. Here we go. Um, 
No, the, jo oh, the, John did not write the Gospel of John. But but that isn't the argument, though. No, I, don't, I don't think it's, Mark it's, it's, Mark. it's very important. Why? Well, okay, do you believe Mark that? Okay, let Mark. me ask you this. And that was the, the earliest. Okay, let me ask you this. Honest question. Do you believe it's important if they wrote them or if they dictated it? Yes. Why? Uh, it, it brings you, like in a court of law, you, you want eyewitnesses. Well, what does the man, what, is the, what do the earliest manuscripts say? Do you know what it says in the Greek uh, on the it top? Is, is it four verses? But on the Greek, what does it say? According to. I want us. So it, it, it could have been. Oh, it could have been it dictated. It might be an omission of uh, dictation information. Kata, exactly. Kata that is. I want okay. Yes, there you go. He just quoted it. Does that does that limit it? Does that? I don't think it affects it negatively. Lessens its credibility. I do that not. It wasn't written by the. Author? I don't think so. The reason I don't think so is because even if you look at Peter, Peter admits that he had a scribe writing his stuff because he was literate. They, I think they all were. I don't think so. I think they were all fishermen. Uh, John was. Jesus was. How, how going could you to see think, a Hold on. Okay. How could you think John was literate? He, he, the writing is incredible Greek. Well, it's very different Greek from the other guys. Because look, hold on. Even if you tell me, even if you guys say, look, I think John was full of whatever, whatever. He, the writing is impeccable Greek. Uh, John it's said. It's simple, uh, simple Kone Greek. Oh, come on. John said uh, Bethlehem. Dash something referred to an actual Bethlehem Ephrathah. What? Ephrathah. That's what it Re says in Michael. Refers to an two. actual tribal clan, okay. not the city. Family, a family. So, uh, is that the first you've heard of that? I've, I've heard of it. I've, I've read it. In, Do you uh, dismiss it? I or? disagree. Okay. I think they debunked it in biblical archaeology review. They put that to the test, and there's no evidence for that. Mm. And a lot of things, I have heard that though. Lot, a lot of things are said to have been put to the test. Well, this is relative. I, I don't see the test. I don't see the. Well, this is relatively late. The, the, the kind of thing that he's bringing up. I, well, I don't one thing for John, in the debate, you said, uh, you mentioned that it, you inferred that an intact hymen is proof of virginity. It's not. Yeah, it is. It can grow back. He's right about that. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, I, but I think he meant that they didn't check. I think that's. Yeah, what I mean, I, I, but I even if they checked, even if it was, that, it was uh, perfectly good or broken, it wouldn't have mattered either way. They. It may not. It, it may not have, but they didn't. They didn't right. do any of that. Oh, that's that's yeah. the point. I, I, I argue oh, that yeah. they did. I argue they did. That is what I argue. What? You think they actually checked? I should. I, I mentioned that. You think that. the rabbis, the Pharisees went in there no, no, and no, like, no, no, stuck no. the fingers in there? No, 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 no. After I mentioned. they circumcised a the child, they stuck the, the Remember the, the, the cross-examination? So Remember, I mentioned, knows? I mentioned that early testimony says that a midwife by the name of Salome did check. I, meant, I said it twice. Is that biblical or extra? No, it's extra biblical. But we've got tons of people that mention it. Tons. What I mean tons, I mean several. Can they fit in a truck? Catholics, uh, probably Catholics love it. their extra biblical way more than Protestants do. Yeah, we do. You have, got a lot of and you got to respect that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. go back far enough. But remember one go, thing that I'm not back. doing. I, I am not quoting Gnostic works or things that are crazy no, out there. Oh, no, of course not. I'm not doing that. Yours aren't crazy. No, I don't think no, they are. Apocryphal and Gnostic are two They're very different people. categories. Very different. Um, well, sure. As are Catholic. William, you said Polycarp was a student of John. Yes. And he personally told John about the virgin birth. Is that in the Bible? No, 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 no. I never said Polycarp told John. I said that John taught Polycarp. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so no, no, no. Is he that in the Bible where John actually taught Polycarp no, about the virgin birth? No, that, uh, it, you'll find that in, in, um, in some um, early church stuff? early church documents. Yeah. Way, way later. No, not way later. I'm saying like maybe about 1995. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back to research. Papius, did, did look it up. Carp can I tell? John really know each other. Papius, they did. Papius can, John, said did that. can I name? Hold on. Can I name? That's what's claimed. Can I tell pa you? Papius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Papius okay. said that. I think I'm, about I'm, 140. He's wrong. Uh, look at Polycarp, letter to the Smyrnians. Look at the martyrdom of Polycarp writing, and then look at Irenaeus. They all testified to what I just told you. They all knew John. No, no, no. They testified. Polycarp knew John. Correct. There you go. You know, you're treating these. these you're treating all this uh, just like. The Mormons treat their claims. I disagree because just, the Mormons like the don't Mormons have ancient claim, documentation. Treat their golden plates. The claim. They Mormons do have don't have. And you quote this person. You quote that person. They, they don't have anything early. Yeah, they have those uh, hieroglyphics that Come were on. that were supposed to be the Book of Abraham and turned yeah. out to just be a funerary. That, that's my Remember? point. They yeah. have nothing. They have nothing ancient. Right. They don't have ancient pedigree. Right. You yourself know Polycarp and these guys. See, you know, we, the reason why we know the Mormons are incorrect is because we 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 knew them, we knew of them, we had the newspaper accounts, we we saw the John, debate, we, can, and we, we saw we saw what they did and what happened. We don't have that because we we can't we can put cross examine test. the New Testament yeah, we can. Uh, authors and their uh, yeah, we can. and the people they write. Sure we can. We can't put them to the test. Sure you can. That. Sure you can. So I think you can. Oh, we already talked about that. We already talked about that. All right. I think we're towards the end. Go. Here's what, a couple things I'd like to say about the event, and give me your feedback on this. Uh, William, you got me no closer to accepting the virgin birth. 
No, sorry. Arg no argument you presented provided conclusive evidence that the, uh, the occurrence uh, happened, and uh, it seems to me still, as it does before, that it's nothing more than a folktale. John, sorry to hear that. you could provide, you you could not provide historical examples of prior virgin births when you were tested, frequency of usage of the word Alma versus Parthenos. You weren't familiar with the Gospel of James, which James repeatedly went to. You had to have known that he was going to refer to it um, if you had. Uh, Should have. I, I've never seen any prior debates with him, but I highly suspect that he's gone to this before. So that have. would have been good research to do. And that's just very critical. I love you both, but sure, I love you as well. Yeah, and I think um, I think you did better than I thought you were, John. No, come, <laughs> come. <laughs> if that's in consolation. Come, come. All right. Um, final words, and if you would like to plug your channel, your blog, your books, all that. Sure thing. You want me to go first or you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to plug a, a radio show I'm frequently on, two of them, uh, Hands On Apologetics um, and Reason and Theology, both that I appear on quite often. And I'm working on two books right now, one on Mary in the early church and a book on Purgatory that I will be publishing probably in about eight months or less. And, uh, Purgatory, wow. Yeah, I look forward to debating John a whole lot more. I've debated him four times now. Uh, John is a very good friend of mine. I look forward to debating him a whole lot more. And I, all I want to do is say that this is a pretty good book. and uh, Very good book. I hope, uh, I hope people consider getting it. It's, um, it's, it's a good book. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you.